Good morning students this is Ritu Bhatia your English teacher today we are going to start with the third chapter from our English reader Dusk written by H H Munro popularly also known as Saki Before starting with the chapter let us have the brief description about the writer The writer of the story H H Munro was born on december 18 1870 and left this world on november 14 1916 he was a witty british author who published under the pen name saki or h h munro the inspiration for the pen name saki is known is unknown and it may be based upon a character in a poem or on a south american monkey given munro's intellect wit and mischievous nature it is possible that it was based on both simultaneously as a writer munro was a master of the story munro died in france during the world war 1 on november 13th 1916th by german sniper fired during the battle of anchor though he was too old to enlist at 43 he had managed to gain a post or in the 22nd battalion of the royal fusiliers where he was a lance surgeon I hope you would love to hear the story which he has written Now let's quickly start with the text Dusk This story written by H H Munro had mastered the art of unexpected ending in dusk he uses the same device and holds the readers in trust till the very end norman gods boy sat on the bench in the park with his back to a strip of bush planted sward fenced wide stretch of the carriage drive so here we see that this man named as norman godsby is the main character in the story the story begins with him and he is found to be sitting in the park okay here the strip means line and sward is a area with short grass he is sitting on the bench in the park and with his back to the strip of the bush planted sward okay he is facing towards the park and his back is towards the fence by the park railings and the row fronting him across the wide stretch of carriage drive he hide park corner with its rattle rattle means series of short sounds hoot of traffic lay immediately to his right so by this we come to know that this park is somewhere near to a very busy moving road where norman gods by could easily hear the sound of the traffic and the up and down moving vehicles it was some 30 minutes past on an early march evening so it is past 30 minutes past 6 means 6:30 pm and it is the month of march and dusk had fallen heavily over the scene dusk 
mitigated by some faint moonlight and many street lamps. So what the writer is trying to tell us that this man Norman Godspy was sitting in the park at about round about 6.30 p.m. in the month of March and now the day is about to end and the night is about to take over. So the hour when the day is about to end and night has not yet come. That hour is called as dusk hour. Okay, so here we see that dusk mitigated. Mitigated means lessened by some faint moonlight and many street lamps. Okay, and the dusk, the <coughs> vision which was getting blurred due to the dusk hour as not it was neither day, it was neither night. So, some of the light which was there was available of the moonlight and of the street lamps. There was a wide emptiness over the road and sidewalk. Sidewalk is pavements and yet there were many unconsidered figures moving silently through the half light or dotted unreticently on the bench and chair scarcely to be distinguished from the shadowed gloom in which they sat. So what, the, what Norman Godsby is trying to tell us? He is trying to explain us the view of the park. He says that it was 6.30 p.m. in the evening and where when the people were almost returning back to their houses after their day's hard work. But still, there were some in the park who were still occupying the spaces and no doubt because the light was not so bright, it was the dusk hour. So, Norman Godspy could not see them clearly but he could make out certain figures sitting here and there in the park. The scene pleased Godspy and harmonized with his present mood. So, here we see the scene pleased pleased God's by and harmonized with his present mood. No doubt, by, by this line we come to know that God's by was not in a very good mood. He felt sad, but still he felt settled somewhere. Dusk to his mind was an hour of the defeated. Actually, what Norman God's by believed, he thought that this dusk hour generally belonged to those who feel defeated in their lives. The wanderers in the dusk did not choose to have strange look fasten on them. Wanderers means the people who were roaming here and there. They do not like the people who come out during this dusk hour to roam here and there. They do not come during the bright light. That is why they love to come out during this dusk hour because they do not want anyone to give them strange looks. Therefore, they come Therefore, they come out in this bad fashion, taking their pleasure sadly in a pleasure ground that had emptied of its rightful occupants. So, the people who love to come out during the dusk hour, their activity is being compared by Norman Godsby with the activity of the bats. Why? Because it is generally seen, it is a natural phenomena that all the birds, when it is about to get dark, when it is evening, they start returning back to their nests. Whereas the opposite is being done by the bats. They come out when it becomes dark and they start flying here and there. 
Similarly, the people who feel defeated themselves in their life, they come out in this dusk hour and they start roaming here and there, taking their pleasure sadly. Means they have come out to make themselves relaxed. No doubt they are not happy, but still they come out to make themselves relaxed and they occupy the pleasure ground. Pleasure ground is the park that had been emptied. Emptied means had been now vacant of its rightful occupants. Who are the rightful occupants? The people who came at the right time, right time, that is the evening time or the day time. They came to the park, they visited it, they enjoyed and they went back home. Beyond the sheltering screen of the bushes and palings came a realm of bright lights and the noisy rushing traffic. Beyond the sheltering screen, no doubt it was the park, so it was all over the greenery, all around it was surrounded by bushes. So through those bushes, thick bushes, there was a realm of brilliant light, a beam of light was coming across through that no noisy traffic. So God Spy's imagination pictured things as he sat on with his bench in the almost deserted walk. Now he was trying to imagine the things which were occurring in and around the park around him and the park was not, was not now occupied by a thick crowd. There were few people in it. Money troubles did not press on him. He had so wished he could have strolled into the thoroughfares of light and noise and taking, taken his place among the jostling ranks of those who enjoyed prosperity or struggled for it. On the bench by his side sat an elderly gentleman with a drooping air of defiance that was probably the remaining vestige of self-respect in an individual who had ceased to defy successfully anybody or anything. So now, suddenly Norman Gottsby realized that the bench on which he was sitting was also occupied by an elderly gentleman who was really not appearing to be happy or in a very happy going mood but still he was there to spend his time his clothes could scarcely be called shabby he was not wearing dirty clothes at least they passed master in half light at least they passed master Master is shine in the half light. Why half light? Because it was a dusk hour and there was no bright light around. But one's imagination could not have pictured the wearer embarking <clears throat> embarking on the purchase of a half and crown box of chocolates or laying out nine pence of a carnation buttonhole. He belonged unmistakably to the forlorn orchestra to whose piping no one dances. Embarking is what? To begin a new action. Carnation, buttonhole means a green, a green you should say lock. It's a buttonhole where to, where to hold a flower. He belonged unmistakably to the forlorn orchestra to whose piping no one dances. So here we see that this man who was sitting on the bench with Norman Gottsby, Norman Gottsby felt that now he is no more required, nobody uh, take care of him and he must, he belongs, he, he, is, he does not hold the utility in the family anymore. He unmistakably belonged to forlorn orchestra 
okay. <clears throat> Forlorn is sad. Orchestra to whose piping no one dances. He was one of the world's lamenters. Lamenters is regret. Who induces no responsive weeping. Okay. Persuade no responding weeping. As he rose to go, suddenly that man gets up and he starts to go, move. God's by imagine him returning to home circle where he was snubbed, put down. What does he mean by snubbed? Put down. So when this man got up and he was about to go, then Norman Godspy thought that he must be returning to his home where he is put down and of no account or to some bleak lodging, okay, where his ability to pay weekly bill was the beginning and the end of the interest he inspired means he is left with very little work and aims in life his retreating figure vanished slowly into the shadows that man continued to walk when god's spy was imagining about his retreat to his home and slowly slowly his figure was not seen his the norman god's by vision got blurred and he was no more able to see him and his place on the bench was taken almost immediately by a young man fairly well dressed but scarcely more cheerful of the main than his predecessor so then quickly his place was taken by another man but this time he was not an old man he was a young strange man but fairly well dressed but more scarcely cheerful of the men no doubt that old elderly man appeared to be much more happier in comparison to this new strange man as if to emphasize the fact his body gestures the, the body gestures with the strange man was caring as if he's trying to stress, emphasizes to stress the, with the fact that the world went badly with him, that he had faced something bad today. The newcomer unburdened, unburdened means he just throwed his body. He just threw his body on himself of an angry and very audible expletive as he flung himself into the seat. You don't seem in a very good temper, said Godspy, judging that he was expected to take a due notice of the demonstration. So now here we see that Norman Godspy, Norman Godspy, no doubt he was not at all inclined to speak to the stranger. But when he showed such strong gestures that he is not in a good mood, that something has went wrong with him. So Norman Godsby was forced to ask him that what is the matter? The young man turned to him with a look of disarming frankness. But something very unexpected happened. And what was that? That a young man, as if really waiting for this opportunity to come, turned towards Norman Godsby and started to explain him what all he had faced that very day. <clears throat> Which put him instantly on his guard. But this frankness, this quickness, this eagerness to discuss about whatever he has faced that day put Norman Godsby, hear him, it refers to Norman, Norman Godsby, put him instantly on his guard, made him alert. You wouldn't be in a good temper if you were in the fix I am in, he said. So the stranger said that if you would have faced what I have faced today, then Norman Godsby, you would have also not been in a good temper, temperament. I have done the silliest thing I have ever done in my life. So this we see that here the stranger is calling himself as to be the 
fool who has done the most stupid thing of his life. Yes, said God spied dispassionately. Now here, after, after experiencing the disarming frankness, we see that Norman Godspy was not now not at all interested in listening that what had happened with him. So dispassionately he said yes, but without being discouraged by this, the strange man continued with his story. <coughs> came up this afternoon meaning to stay at the Pantagonian Hotel in Berkshire Square, continued the young man. When I got there, I found it had been pulled down some weeks ago and the cinema theatre ran up on the site. The taxi driver recommended me to another hotel some away off and I went there. I just sent a letter to my people giving them the address and then I went out to buy some soap. I had forgotten to pack any and I hate using hotel soap. Then I strolled about a bit, had a drink at a bar and looked at the shops and when I came to turn to step, turn my steps back to the hotel, I suddenly realized that it didn't remember its name or even what street it was in. So here we see that the strange man was on and on with his story. He told that that very afternoon only he came to that city and he had to stay at a Pantagonian hotel in Berkshire Square. But when this man went to this hotel, he found that this hotel has been demolished. And now there is a new cinema theater run up on the site. Now on the recommendation, that is advice of the taxi driver, he went and took a room in a new hotel, which was some way away from that place. But af after taking the room, he first thing he did, he wrote a letter to his people and giving them the address of the new place, the new hotel he had occupied. And then he went out after taking a few um, little amount of money, he went out of the hotel, of the new hotel to buy some soap. Why? Because he doesn't like to use the soaps which are provided in the hotels. And so naturally he went out in the market, he roamed, strolled to roam here and there, just like that. And he had a drink in the bar and then he had a look at the shops which you call as window shopping. And then when he was, when he thought that he should return back to his new hotel, he realized that he has forgotten the exact location, name and the street in which his new hotel was located. Okay students, so today I will end with the chapter here, with the, for the rest of the path, please wait for my next video. Thank you.